I'm in the garage today and we're getting the chainsaws ready uh, to do a little bit of chainsaw milling. I'm getting the John Surratt 325 big bore uh, up and going. It was running good last weekend so basically what we're going to do is um, make a homemade ripping chain for it. I found no matter who you buy your ripping chain from, if you order it from Oregon or if you order it from Gramberg, it doesn't matter. It seems to take forever. Um, and they're really exponentially more expensive and I don't really understand why that's the case. The chain's a chain. In my mind, um, that is the big downfall to buying uh, an actual ripping chain. If you use a normal chain, uh, they say it makes more marks and all that kind of stuff, but a normal chain will rip a board. They just say it takes longer. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a normal organ chain uh, that's meant for cutting cross like bucking logs and uh, we are going to modify it to use it as a ripping chain. So basically all the Gramberg ripping chains are, are just slightly modified chains cut at a different angle. So I can't really see why you can't just use a normal chain. I've seen lots of people online make them and uh, I kind of wanted to see how it would work uh, on one of my chainsaws. So let's build it. So I started off with an Oregon Power Cut 73XL068 uh, uh, chain and um, I bought two of them. So we can actually try uh, the new chain unmodified against the modified chain. I already installed the chain, we clamped it in the uh, vise. And basically what I'm going to do is we are going to start off by grinding these at 10 degrees. These are basically cut at 30 degrees for cross and we're going to we're going to resharpen it to 10 degrees. And when you resharpen it, you got to make sure that um, this whole angle is at 10 degrees. I've seen some people sharpen them where they just sharpen here. Uh, that's not going to work. You're going to have to resharpen the whole chain at 10 degrees. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use the Princess Auto 12 volt uh, chain sharpener and I really feel this thing works absolutely great. So we're going to use that. Oregon has a different colored link so you know when the end of your uh, chain is. So we will start sharpening. We'll roll around until this gets back. My Princess Auto sharpener doesn't go to 10 degrees so I uh, marked basically where 10 degrees was and we will sharpen this up. So we made the first grind. It's almost 10 degrees. Uh, I think it just needs a little bit more. So we're going to go one more time around to do a very light, accurate grind on it. Um, when you do it lightly, it really does make a nice edge on the tooth. So I want to make sure that it's as sharp as possible. I sharpened it to 10 degrees. Looks like it's got a nice edge. So now we're gonna check the rakers. So if anyone hasn't seen, this is a raker gauge. Basically you set it on top of the teeth like this and then whatever, not past the edge, you file off and then the raker should be set right. So when you're filing your rakers, the proper way to do it is set the file down and push it, set the file down and push it, uh, and kind of lift it off. Um, when I did that, I almost purposely did it uh, where I was just back and forth, because for some reason, that really, really annoys people. It annoys them to the fact that they'll actually make a huge, huge ordeal about it, and really, however you want to file it, go for it. We are going to cut two teeth, uh, leave two teeth, cut two teeth. Um, basically, you're cutting two teeth in half and leaving the other two original 
So then we miss two teeth. And then I use my flat edge and I set it up against here and I leave it touch the back tooth over there and then I mark it. And then you go to the other side and you make sure that your tooth is up against here and then you mark it. And then you keep going, you miss two and keep doing that until you've got all the teeth marked. Went all the way around the chain and then now we have mark, mark, and this one was marked, so I wiped it off. We'll just remove this one, and then um, that's right. If you had an even amount, it would actually come out perfect, but uh, most times it never does. So, Okay, so now we're going to cut off, so now we're just going to nip off those little pieces off okay, of each So now tube. I'm going to use a Dremel. Uh, Bob, it's a Dremel knockoff, but it kind of works the same. So now we're just going to cut the teeth off. With the Dremel, you have pretty good control, um, but it's still not perfect. Like that's a little bit uh, thinner than I would like, but as long as you don't really go into the actual link, any farther into where the link sits. Uh, so these two are not touched, and then you do two more, and then you don't touch the next two, and you just continue on till you're done. So that's how I make a ripping chain. We're gonna go out later today and uh, run the chainsaw mill, hopefully. If this rain stops, it just kind of started, but um, I might at some point throw the original uh, organ chain on and try it and just see how much of a difference it really does make. Um, but, I do know I have a ripping chain on my Alaskan sawmill and it really does make nice smooth cuts. So uh, with a little bit of time, you can actually get a normal chainsaw chain to run like a uh, store-bought ripping chain. So that's about enough for today. You guys have a good one.